guys, it's Melissa from Generation Studio and Shop. I am coming at you today with part two of Prep, Paint, and Stain a Piece of Furniture and the how-to about it. Um, yesterday, uh, we went into the piece that we're doing and I asked everybody, uh, what color would you like this uh, hutch, or not a hutch, oh my gosh, the server to be. Um, sorry, I've been running around like crazy this morning, um, tearing apart bathrooms and kitchens and stuff. So. Um, yesterday on our live video, we came at you and asked you if you would like to see this in midnight blue, midnight blue, ash, which is a gray, bayberry, which is a green, or the light choice I chose was putty. And these are all fusion mineral paint. So let me go over what we've done thus far in getting a piece of furniture prepped and ready to take on paint. Uh, the first thing you want to do is pick your piece of furniture. That's very important. Uh, make sure it has some good bones in it. Um, if it has a little bit of things that need to be fixed up on it, and you can do that, no problem. If you need to source somebody out, out to fix those. Um, this piece, um, the only thing that I found as I was cleaning it was a couple pieces of the veneer had lifted a little bit so I went ahead and glued those yesterday after I cleaned it. So that's the first step that you want to do when you are doing a piece of furniture. You want to scrub it. Um, some people think that you want to sand it first. You do not want to do that because what you're doing when you're sanding is pushing that dirt. If you haven't cleaned it, you're pushing the dirt into the piece of furniture so you don't want to do that. Um, it seems like cleaning it first is sort of an extra step but it's very very important you want to get all the grime and gook off there that you possibly can so the first thing we did to this piece of furniture um, I came back on yesterday to tell you um, to remove your hardware your doors your drawers it just makes life so much easier so the first thing you want to do like I said is pick out your piece of furniture that you want to paint second is remove all your hardware your doors your drawers Make sure that you label your hardware and put them in baggies like I mentioned yesterday so you know exactly where they go uh, back when you're ready to put everything back together. The next thing that I did was scrubbed it. Yesterday I used this Crud Cutter No Rinse um, Pre-Paint Cleaner. Like I said, that's by Crud Cutter. It works very well. Very well. Uh, it says no rinse, but I always rinse everything off of any piece, whether it's a piece of furniture, kitchen, bathroom, whatnot. I always, always, always rinse. You never know what could act as a resist when you're trying to paint. So I take all precautions. I wear my gloves so as not to leave oil on pieces of furniture after they've been cleaned. So I scrubbed it with the crud cutter, rinsed it down, and then I let it sit and let it dry. Um, it's very, very important to let your wood dry before sanding because all it's going to do is gunk up your sandpaper and it also can like sort of eat into the wood because it's damp it's it's you know moisture is in there and as you're scrubbing it's not going to leave a smooth finish so let your piece dry give it some time don't try to rush it because it's going to actually take more time in the end trying to fix you know if you started just taking wood away from the piece of furniture that didn't need to so scrubbed it let it dry this morning when I came in, um, I went ahead and sanded the piece down. Um, I used 220 grit sandpaper, and one of my favorite sandpapers is this flexible stuff. It works so well. Oops, sorry, I, that was not washed off. It has all kinds of dust in it, I better be careful. But it is like a piece of rubber, and it makes it really easy. It's almost like going around the legs of this was just so easy with this. Um, it's made by 3M, it comes in a roll, you can cut it, it also comes in sheets, but it's almost like shoe shining, I think, I guess you would call it. Um, if you go around your legs and just put this around your legs and go back and forth like this, and then you can squeeze it like this and get in all the nooks and crannies and go right back and forth, and I've never cut myself on a piece like this. Um, if I use paper, sandpaper, I always get a cut somehow. So I sanded it really, really well today and then I wiped it down again. And what I use to wipe it down is denatured alcohol, a 50-50 mixture of denatured alcohol and water. I wanted to remove all that dust, but I skipped a step there, sorry. Before I even did the denatured alcohol and water mixture, I vacuumed up what dust I could see that I had created. 
Um, I try to remove all the dust as I possibly can and then wipe it down with that denatured alcohol and water mixture. And like I said, it's just a 50-50 mixture. And I like these staining sponges. Um, and it just takes them off. I can get in all the nooks and crannies with these. And I still have a portion of it to do. So I was going to do that with you guys here. Uh, I will not be painting it today. But um, because I just want to make sure it's totally, totally dry. But this is the 50-50 denatured alcohol and water mixture. And just make sure you get, if your piece has any nooks and crannies in it, just make sure that you get in all those. And of course, when you're sanding, you want to make sure you go with the grain of wood. Um, I like using the denatured alcohol and water mixture to clean a piece after it's been sanded because it doesn't take a whole lot of time to dry. It evaporates, but it's, um, it is a good way of making sure that all the guck and grime that you have on a piece is gone. Um, so I'm going to continue down here. Um, as you can see, I have all these other pieces, the two drawers. Um, I took, I think I showed this to you yesterday. I took this back piece off that goes back here. It was just gunked with grime in here. And as you can see, I cleaned it. It looks a totally different. Um, now what I did, something I did yesterday also, um, as I was cleaning it, I stripped this, the top off. And how I did that was I used denatured alcohol and um, steel wool. And I don't know, I'll bring you up closer so you can see it, but it, it just resembles a lot of what this looks like here. That's what the top of it looks like now. And I'm gonna restain that and then paint the bottom. So um, all I did, um, I do have a video on my generations page of using the denatured alcohol and steel wool to take it off. And the reason people ask me why I don't use stripper I do use stripper, don't get me wrong, I usually use the orange stripper, um, but I like the denatured alcohol and um, the steel wool when you're working with veneer. I really, really like it a lot. Um, you want to be careful not to go down into the veneer. Um, you don't want to go through it. So I just, I, it's what I like. So there's no rhyme or reason to it. You can do it that way. You can get citrus strip, which I've used many on many occasions. but. I've scrubbed all these pieces down. The only um, part I still need to do was right here, and I just wanted to show you very quickly how I rub it down. Make sure you get in all the crooks, the crooks and nooks and crannies. I don't know why I always say that word different. <laughs> but you just want to make sure you remove all the dust. Um, am I in a spot where you can't see me? Sorry. So just make sure all your dust is removed. You don't want to put um, get any resist and any dust or even, like I said, oils from your hands uh, will keep paint from adhering in spots. It just, it's known to happen, so I don't take any chances. Okay, so we went over the cleaning, the taking off the hardware. What I did with my mineral spirits is after I um, used the denatured alcohol, I just wiped it down a little bit with mineral spirits as well after that was a little bit dry. So the piece is ready for stain on the top and it's ready for paint on the bottom. And I asked you guys, what color would you like to see this piece in? And if you've been following along on there, was it midnight blue? This came in second, and I was a little bummed, but not really. That came in second, but out of the ash, the bayberry, and the putty, we are going to be painting this in bayberry. I am so excited. Um, I haven't painted anything in this color yet, so I think we're gonna, go with the bayberry. I'm going to add some other little colors, but this is going to be the main color. And then I'm also going to use um, Homestead House. It's Fusion Mineral Paint Stain and Finishing Oil all in one. And I'm going to be using it in the Golden Pine. Um, here, I can show you that. So that's what I'm going to be doing the top and then that back piece in. So if you look, now this is just one coat. It's going to get a little darker but this is the combination we're gonna get. So I think it's gonna look really great. I am so excited. And like I said, it's gonna get a little deeper than this. Um, I'm hoping to match it with um, like the inside and stuff. I don't think I'm gonna paint the inside of this, but we'll see as I go. So this is the color scheme that we're gonna have. You guys tune in tomorrow. I'm hoping to um, 
do part three and start painting this. I just want to make sure that this is totally dry before I put paint on it and seal um, any moisture in there. So it's very important. Don't rush your projects. Give them proper time to dry. Okay. So thank you guys for helping me. Bayberry and pine is what we're doing. Okay. You guys have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.